you thought you'd kill this off. I tried. We're back. I'm mad as hell. You want to have a great shootout of 2010? Yeah. Fine. Let's do it. Five paces. One, two, three, four, five. Jens, welcome to episode two. Okay, this is a really interesting episode. You know, I want to just mention something in case people never saw episode one. The biasness. Yeah, how we removed ourselves from the test. Right. Initially, we were going to shoot it, but we decided to get Robert Primes and Gary Adcock and Philip Bloom. Uh, and Ryan Emerson. And Ryan Emerson um, as and the industry <laughs> professionals yeah. to kind of, you know, remove us from administering the test. And, and we told them, do it however you want, you know, the scientific way you want to do it. You guys obviously are not going to be selling for us, so it's an unbiased test. They ran the test, essentially. This mm -hmm. is a rock-solid test. We did not take anything from any vendors. You know, we called in some favors, mm -hmm. like we had Astro Film Workers, you know, and Reed Brody, who I've known for 20 right. years. Right. You know, I a love lot the of guy. Favors, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was beautiful, man. He let us use that color mm -hmm. timing theater. Resolution. Digital studios. Yeah, I mean, we are right now. wow. I mean, this yeah. is awesome, this place. Also, we had Schumacher, um, Schumacher James, yeah. you know, who's, we yeah. love that guy. He comes over for lunch all the time. Okay, so let's talk about episode two. So this is pretty crazy now. I mean, I, I love this episode because in the first test, what you're gonna see is uh, we're showing the low light test, mm -hmm. um, which is the candle and the, the bulb and right. the model. We saw out. that in the latitude test, but uh, what we did here is we did the same thing. We ramped it through all the, the optimum ISOs. Yeah, now what do you mean by optimum ISOs? Well, uh, the in-between ISOs we discovered using the scope, and we did days of testing before we did our actual test that you're about to see. Uh, every other ISO is electronically uh, produced. So we found the ones that are the true ISOs, if you want to call it that, and shot only at those increments. So it was uh, uh, 160, 320, 640, that sort of thing. Right, and the, the other the other ISOs tend to be kind of noisy because they're yeah, really they, ironically made. they were noisier than the, than than the one that's above it, the, the interim ones. Right. So so we opted not to even show those because it would confuse matters, and there was no need to go that many increments. And just so people know, you're only going to see film in one of these because the film was... I mean, the minute you start to push it past 800, it, it's breaking apart anyway. It wouldn't... Right. It would have been a waste in that pair of film. And again, the film was just to uh, sort of a, as a start point and as a standard. Right. Um, because we're going up to 2,600, 5,000... Oh, and beyond. So. Yeah, and beyond. All right, well, uh, let's start looking at the sensitivity tests. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at light sensitivity. We're going to ramp up from ASA 160 all the way up to ASA 5000. What we're going to show here is just the flame section, and then we're going to show the light bulb section, and then we're going to show the girl in her optimal light section. Okay, this is the 5D Mark II, 7D, 1D Mark IV, the D3S, and the GH1. Okay, so now we're going to do the same scene, but we're going to ramp it up to 320 ISO. Okay, so here's the Kodak. 5219, the Fuji 8573, 5D, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, the D3S, and the GH1. Now here's the same scene again, ramped up to ISO 640. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and the GH1. Okay, here we go now. Let's bring it up to 1250. Same scene. Okay, this is the 5D Mark II, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, 
the D3S, and the GH1. Okay, now here's the same scene, now at 2500 ISO. 5D Mark II. 70. 1D Mark IV. Nikon D3S. And last, the same scene again at 5000 ISO. 5D. 7D. Uh, the 1D. The Nikon. This is just the section where the girl is in her optimal light. Okay, this is the 5D Mark II, 7D. The 1D Mark IV. The D3S. And the GH1. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same scene, but we're gonna ramp it up to 320 ISO. Here's the Kodak. 5219, the Fuji 8573, 5D Mark II, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, the D3S, and the GH1. Now here's the same scene again, ramped up to ISO 640. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and the GH1. Okay, here we go now. Let's bring it up to 1250. Same scene. This is the 5D Mark II, 7D. 1D Mark IV, the D3S, and the GH1. Okay, now here's the same scene, now at 2500 ISO. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and last, the same scene again at 5000 ISO. This is the 5D Mark II, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, the D3S. Okay, in the same test now, we're just seeing the section where the light bulb is reflecting off the book and lighting his face. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and the GH1. Okay, so now we're gonna do the same scene, but we're gonna ramp it up to 320 ISO. Here's the Kodak. 5219, the Fuji 8573. 5D. The 7D. Uh, the 1D. The Nikon. And the GH1. Now here's the same scene again, ramped up to ISO 640. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and the GH1. Okay, here we go now. Let's bring it up to 1250. Same scene. Okay, this is the 5D Mark II, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, the D3S, and the GH1. Okay, now here's the same scene, now at 2500 ISO. 5D, the 7D, uh, the 1D, the Nikon, and last, the same scene again at 5000 ISO. Okay, this is the 5D Mark II, 7D, the 1D Mark IV, the D3S. All right, so why don't we hear from the guys in the theater, see what their comments were. Terrific, let's do it. All right. Look at that. It's just <laughs> gorgeous. We all are just astounded at the quality of these images. 2500 ASA looks damn good. Yeah, yeah if you pushed film to 2500 oh, ASA, you can't push it. There's no question. I think it would fall apart. From the Canon, just from the Canon line, there is no clear winner. The video noise is something I'll never get used to. The look of the noise from the Nikon is much more pleasing than the look of the noise off the Canon. Yeah. yeah, the 7D is not the winner in the low light stuff. It doesn't surprise me that the Every 7D uh, falls down a little bit because it's way too many pixels crammed on, mm -hmm. on a small chip. All the problems you're seeing here, I'm absolutely certain, 
is because of, of the in-camera compression. Yeah. Okay. The I recipe to get to a 1080 or 720 camera image camera is different on each camera. camera. There's some pretty artful yeah. compromises. The compression. And they're different on each of the cameras. The 8-bit compressed color space. The different chip size and the different native resolution. Yeah. All the shit that has to be, that's in with it. So it continues to be. You know, be this stuff. miracle that such a great thing comes out the other end given how many compromises they have to make inside the camera there's a lot, a lot of juggling under the, the hood there to try to have the same file come out the other end i haven't been embracing this technology for nine months they're totally usable i've gotten punched in the face great on the big screen beaten into the ground you could shoot a film with them buried alive with this thing it's there it's on the big screen it's on inner cutting because it's a still camera it looks to me like it's close enough uh, it is it's fantastic and it's goddamn exciting i'll tell you that much <laughs> <laughs> okay so then we got the the cream of the crop the ultra iso yeah, test the, the the one that really sort of surprised everybody in a way and that was kind of a fun thing we added on the end of our initial test something that phil came up with was just having um, a lighter, you know, essentially a one foot candle test that he starts out at half a foot candle and brings it into his face, uh, I think past two foot candles at that point, and uh, ramp the ISOs into the ultra high ISOs, as you call it, the hyper ISOs. Right. And Let's uh, just mention that we only did the test with the 1D correct. and with the uh, D3S. D3S. The Nikon D3S. Right. And right. mainly because those are the cameras that really can get into these hyper ISOs. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell us, let's tell the audience here about uh, the, the, uh, how we did the 1D and how we did the D3S. So in this test with the lighter, and we, uh, every time we did the same action with this really interesting character we cast. Um, we started somewhere in the mid ASAs, uh, you'll see in a minute, um, and ramped it up all the way to 104 ISO or something like that. It I mean, was, it was extremely high. Ridiculous. Right. But, you know, watch in the 26,000 ISO range, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting results. Mm -hmm. and, and this is something Bob was talking about, is like the goal is to be able to start going into like New York City, Chicago, places like that and literally, and I hate this word, be able to shoot without huge HMIs and lights and things mm -hmm. like that, you know, we would still use lights. Or, or sculpting with the lights that you have around you. Let's see what happens. Let's see. <laughs> All right, this next thing that we're gonna look at um, kind of came up late. That was uh, something that Philip came up with. This shows you an example of where nothing can compete with these DSLRs. Right, we're starting at 640 for these and going extreme. Okay, here's the 1D Mark IV at 640. So what we're seeing in this move here is going from a half a foot candle, essentially, to two foot candles when it's up by his face. It's the D3S. The reason we only had these two cameras in this test is because uh, these are the only ones that can uh, shoot above 6400. Okay, here we go now. Let's bring it up to 1250. All right, so here's the 1D Mark IV. At 1250. Looks really nice, actually. It's it's incredible. I mean, okay, at this point, you have exceeded the the light sensitivity of film. Right, because it's very noiseless still. All right, now we're cranking it up to 2500. It's the 1D. You know, a little scrap here, but still very usable. Yeah, especially when he's when, when the light. Is, he's optimally lit by that. Here's the D3S. Right, it's Interestingly enough, the, the sort of noise structure is pretty organic in the D3S, if you want to call it that. Less, right. more grain, less noisy to me. Yeah, it doesn't have that video noise. Now, are these with the noise reduction on? Well, the cannons do not have a noise reduction. Okay, here we go. This is with the noise but reduction. But this on. one here at the 5000 is with noise reduction internally on in the camera, which really makes it amazing. Ten thousand ISO. I mean, that just I laugh when I hear that. I mean, that candle is so overexposed. <laughs> It is, but I mean, um, you know, 
again, it depends on what you're doing. Uh, it may work great. But see, the D3S is really starting to shine now, so to speak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you look around his forehead and that, the noise is not video-ish. No. Totally usable at 10,000. Okay, now we're stepping it up to... 25,000 ISO. I mean, this to me looks like, you know, if you've got 16 millimeter in the forest and you're working with moonlight or something, mm -hmm. you know. But now here with the D3S, the grain structure is just totally different to me than in the Canon. No. I mean, that's, this is what really astonished me. I mean, he's it, if that light was not in this framed out of the scene, he would have been perfectly fine. Right. And, and at 26,000 ISO, it would have been usable. All right, look at this number now. 51,000 ISO. All right. Okay, now now as we're moving up to 51,000 ISO, we're, we're gonna just show the um, the D3S because cameras without noise reduction at this level is actually not even worth showing. <laughs> Still. I mean, actually usable, uh, depending I mean, on you're what your shoot yeah, is. Yeah, right, I mean, you know. Look, notice the pattern in the shirt, though. It's really still... 102,000 ISO. I call ISO. it organic, but... I mean, if I'm in a jam, if I absolutely need to get a shot... Um, in color, no less. I mean, night vision can do this, but it's green. <laughs> I mean, there are scenarios, there's documentary type shooting, it's not all about independent features and that. 50,000. <laughs> you don't really need three decimal places. But it's... Here's a Nikon at 100,000 ISO. <laughs> As you see, we're not maintaining exposure, look at that. 100,000, you can, you, can, you can say you saw it first, 100,000 ISO. So people were asking, why would you use a DSLR over a mid-size HD camera? This. <laughs> wow. Remember, you couldn't even see him at 640. Look at that. I mean, dudes, that yeah, is scary. That's at arm's length. It's probably 24 inches away from his face. Yeah. That's a usable image. It was, it was, it's pretty impressive. I've really never worked on footage like that before, so. It's science fiction. <laughs> I mean, it's just unbelievable. Yeah, look at the look at that's ridiculous. That's so on. good. That's that looks scary. Like, look how guys, noiseless look it is. That. And whatever I mean, noise you see is pretty organic. You know? I mean, yeah. seriously. It's a lot of light from him. Dick lighter. <laughs> wow. See, look at that. <laughs> He's lit. He's actually lit. That's a totally acceptable image when his arm is out there. You're talking about lighting him a one foot candle or, right, or right, half right. a foot, half a foot candle, because it's two feet away, it's half a foot candle. Right. Prior to these DSLRs, you could not shoot higher than 5,000 ISO. Well, you so, probably couldn't shoot at 5,000. 5,000, so 1, yeah, we see the image, and I heard a lot of people gasping like, ugh, green, but now we have an image when previously we could not shoot an image. Well, I'm also astounded that, you know, 25,000 ISO, you know, a half a foot candle is, gives me a, a beautiful image on some of these imagers. It was beautiful. pretty damn clean. It was beautiful. But 25,000 was great. This is what we said was still good, wasn't it? Look at this, this is still good. Not that noisy. It, no. Not that noisy? What noise? No, I mean, <laughs> Jesus. I find that's pretty amazing. Except the grain is not yeah. Those are big, chunky blocks of color. The Nikon shine there, and uh, I, I find the noise uh, more acceptable looking than the noise from the Canon. The Nikon was the clear winner in low light. Especially with its clean uh, lack of noise. I mean, what it is is the noise is black and white, whereas the noise we had in the Canons was colored noise. The Canon's got a much more video nastiness yeah, this look to the noise. This looks more this analog almost yeah. somehow. This, this looks more textural like grain, yeah. Yeah, yeah look, and this look at that, see well, the yeah, color noise. The noise right the it's also pattern. smaller, yeah. smaller oh. chunks. No, but you know Aries new software that supposedly rebuilds the frames, so yeah. denoises it. I mean, that could take care of anything that doesn't have a pattern in yeah. it. You know? How do you feel uh, someone like Stanley Kubrick would have felt? He was around right now. What was that? It was a Zeiss lens that uh, Kubrick no, used on Barry Lyndon. Because you know we know we know about the Barry Lyndon story. Right? F, F. point seven lenses. And yeah. All that, Custom like that. made. This from where was it? NASA. NASA. Oh, you'd, you'd be out. You'd be out of the door. Yeah. But like what you were talking about earlier, of all the other applications besides just shooting, it's, it's military, scientific, forensic. Well, just think of all those shows, those reality shows that use the night vision, the green crap. Now, now they can use this and have like a much more decent shot in really? in, in, in that kind of light. To go out under a full moon. 
at night and shoot a drama by real moonlight. That's been the um, dream for a while. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to have big lights, big cameras, big crews. Now young students or young filmmakers can get a tool and can begin to shoot to a very high end, way beyond 16 millimeters, yeah. mm -hmm. and at a far less cost, and you'll be able to find out if they've got it, if they can actually do it. That's you know? it. Some of you might have noticed that we flipped episode two with episode three, and that's mainly because we've added things to episode three now. So what are we going to see? We're going to see this color test, which is really nice. It's just sort of um, what these cameras look like in a real environment. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to see, this was kind of real late. We threw this in, and I, I sort of just said, I want to see this. Just in case, even though everybody says it would look like bad. Yeah. I wanted to do a green screen test. Right. Yeah, that kept coming up in conversations. Well, yeah, they don't, they don't, they won't they don't key good. I want to see that for right. myself. Yeah. And the third thing we're going to see is a resolution test. Mm -hmm. Tell me about this resolution test. Uh, what we did for a resolution test was we used the bathroom scene and essentially we refocused for the magazine you saw in the background and blew it up uh, to 360% uh, or something like yeah, that huge. for the 2K. And uh, we're looking at the type and, and that in there. You'll see when you, when you watch it, um, it becomes apparent, uh, you know, the resolution of these different cameras. Okay. One of the interesting things is uh, we got the T2i late, so you're going to see these tests all with the T2i. The, the uh, green screen uh, and the color test. The tests are very important. I think that the tests act as a good basis for you to select a camera to buy. Like in episode one, we want to show you an example of what finished work can look like. I personally selected Kevin Shahinian's City of Lakes. I think it is just a phenomenal example of what you can do with a 5D Mark II. And some of you might not realize, but this is actually part of a wedding concept film. It's, it's incredible to watch. And I hope you enjoy it. City of Lakes by Kevin Shahinian. Anything that you can imagine can be accomplished. 